Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the important parts of beta oxidation that you need to know for the MCAT. While the MCAT isn't going to expect you to know all the names of the enzymes involved with beta oxidation, you do need to be able to calculate the amount of ATP produced when oxidizing a carbon fatty acid of X carbons long. That's what we're going to spend time doing today. Let's learn by doing. Let's take a regular 20 carbon saturated fatty acid. To tag this fatty acid for beta oxidation, it needs to first be activated, similar to the beginning steps of glycolysis. In this case, two ATP worth of energy is going to be needed to activate this fatty acid. Now here I've drawn an ATP going to an AMP. This is equivalent to two ATP worth of energy because for the AMP to get back to an ATP, it's going to first have to go through an ADP before getting back to an ATP. So therefore this is worth to ATP. Additionally, we also are going to need to modify this fatty acid a little bit. We're going to do this by adding a CoA group. Now this is all happening in the cytosol. We can only actually begin getting energy out of this when we bring it down to the mitochondria. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go through the outer mitochondrial membrane, through the inner mitochondrial membrane, until we deposit our 20 carbon fatty acid with that CoA group bound to it. Once inside, four different enzymes are going to act on the FFA CoA to reduce it by two carbons down to an 18 carbon fatty acid. While we don't need to know what these enzymes are, you do need to know that they're gonna produce one FADH2 and one NADH. We also are gonna lose one acetyl CoA during every single cycle, which we see is replaced by adding a CoA in during that last step. So we lose a CoA and bring a CoA back in. Now for a 20 carbon fatty acid, this cycle is gonna repeat a total of nine times. This means that we're gonna produce 10 acetyl CoA, we're gonna make nine FADH2, and we're gonna make nine NADH. Now where this can be confusing is, well, why do we have 10 acetyl CoA? Well, when we get down to that last and final step, when we're down to four carbons, when this gets broken in half, we form two acetyl-CoA groups for that very last beta oxidation, giving us an extra acetyl-CoA. Once we have the amount of acetyl-CoA, FADH2, and NADH produced figured out, it's time to add some numbers to do some calculation. So we want to figure out how much ATP do we make per acetyl-CoA. We're going to make 12 ATP per acetyl-CoA. For FADH2, we're going to make 2 ATP. And for each NADH, we're going to make 3 ATP. Multiplying these out, we get 120 ATP from the acetyl-CoA. We get 9 times 2, 18 ATP from the FADH2. And we get 13 times 9, 27 ATP from NADH. If we sum these together, we get a net total of 165 ATP. But we're not done in yet. We have to factor in that 2 ATP it took to get this party started. This brings us down to a total of 163 ATP. These are the steps you'll want to take to calculate the amount of ATP produced from a fatty acid on test day. In our next video, we will walk you through a guided example that includes glycerol. I recommend you check it out for some more practice before trying on your own. Thank you so much for watching our video on beta oxidation, and I will see you next time.